Hey everyone, this is George Coase with a special but maybe a little bit interesting episode of the Innovators Mindset podcast. The really interesting thing is you're not actually going to hear from me today. You're going to hear from two special guests that actually don't exist. This is AI having a conversation regarding my email on Adam Grant's book, Hidden Potential, and the three takeaways that I share. So in this podcast, and you can actually watch this on YouTube, and that will have captions, we'll have video. Uh, the captions were created uh, using CapCut. The uh, visuals were created using a, a software called, I think it's Pictoria, I'll put it in the link down below. But the podcast was generated by this new technology from Google. It's called Notebook LM. And I saw it on being shared on social media. I thought I would try it out, kind of play around with it. And it's really fascinating because it is extremely conversational. There's ums and ahs. There's all of it. It feels kind of authentic, which is a little bit weird to say the least. Now, it's not perfect. I'm actually not correcting some of the things that were shared in it. For example, there is one part where they share a quote that they attribute to myself, but it's actually from Dr. Yang Zhao. So I will connect the, e you'll see in the description, the email that this is actually referencing. But I want you to think about as you listen to this and maybe you're watching it, how do we actually utilize this with students? How do we actually see this as benefit from ourselves? It would be great to kind of summarize some content and share, but there's also a, a little scary part that if we actually just take this content, create a podcast because we're trying to create media, things like that, how much do we learn through the process when we have AI doing everything for us? And I'm not saying you can't learn from this process, but I just want you to kind of think about it and think about what could this actually look like? You know, how could this be utilized to actually deepen our learning, to develop wisdom or is this something that we're just going to replace everything that we're doing so that we don't have to spend any time thinking? The, the conversation, this technology, as far as I know right now, is only in the language of English. Um, it's a, a, a man and a woman having a conversation together. There's some really interesting takeaways that <laughs> the AI, I guess, um, shares that I don't talk about in the email. I think one of the things they talk about is retrieval practice. And I don't think I actually use, utilize those terms. I did a search for it because I'm like, I don't remember saying anything about retrieval practice. So they're making some of their own kind of leaps and it's not wrong, but it's not something I shared. So there's certain takeaways the, the AI has from this too. So they're creating some of their own learning as well. So I wanted to share this with you. I wanted to see what you thought about it. If you watch it on YouTube, I think it's interesting. I, I basically just auto-generated using Pictori uh, to uh, create visuals alongside, but you can see the subtitles. The subtitles are not perfect um, in there at all. None of this is perfect, to be honest with you, which is the scary part. And the scary because when it's not perfect, there's almost an authenticity to it, but it's, I don't know if it's, I don't know, is, is authentic the term? Is authentic the term we should be using for this? Because... I don't know. It's it's a little bit weird, but I want to kind of figure this out. You can't I can't really criticize or utilize anything unless I'm willing to learn it myself. The interesting thing about the email is I talk about how much I try to learn alongside to see the relevance of this stuff. So I thought there's no better place to do this than in a podcast. So um, enjoy the podcast from these two people talking about an email. They do compliment me, which I didn't do. <laughs> I didn't do. They just did it themselves. But it's really, really fascinating. The description, um, the the link to the email, and there's a side-by-side -side comparison. By the way, the Notebook LM, you can create study guides, all of these things through the process. Uh, I did capture the transcript. I, I um, have that in a space as well. But I just wanted to share this with you because the whole focus of this podcast is continuously growing, trying new things, and what better place to do this. So understand the conversation you're about to hear is real but it's not so welcome back to a very fascinating episode of the innovators mindset podcast ever feel like there's this hidden potential in people just kind of waiting to be unlocked maybe even in ourselves that's what we're diving into today we've got george koros's email and it really got me thinking about adam grant's 
Hidden Potential, you know, that book. I've had it on my nightstand for weeks, and they complement each other so well. Two great minds, similarly wavelength. I'm ready to dive in. So Koros, he talks about going beyond the basics. And that just resonated with me because it's not just about knowing the rules, is it? It's about what you do with that knowledge. Yeah, it's like that quote uh, from Koros. Reading and writing should be the floor, not the ceiling. Literacy is important. Yeah, it gets you started. But then the creativity, the application, that's where it gets interesting. Right. And Hidden Potential, Grant compares literacy to a launch pad. It just clicked for me. Mm. Like, yeah, you need that foundation to launch into something better. But how do we help people actually take off, bridge that gap from knowing to doing? That's the million dollar question, right? To teach the basics. OK, but how do we cultivate an environment where people feel empowered to experiment, to innovate? really puts those boundaries, you know. And here's where Koros takes this turn, this unexpected turn. He talks about the power of not knowing, almost like embracing that uncertainty can be a good thing. It's a little counterintuitive. It is. And I think that's why it's so powerful. He connects it to like how kids learn languages. Have you ever yeah. noticed how fearless they are? Just dive right in, make a ton of mistakes and somehow figure it out. It's so true. No toddler is afraid to mess up their grammar, but ask an adult to try a new app. They're terrified of clicking the wrong button. What changes? It's fascinating, isn't it? Somewhere we start to fear making mistakes, looking silly, and it just stifles our willingness to explore and learn. But whether it's language or technology, the principle's the same. It's about being comfortable with experimentation and understanding those mistakes. They're just feedback. And then Koros has this question, it's really thought-provoking. Do we eventually scare students out of pushing buttons by focusing on getting the right product rather than getting better at the process? It makes you think about how we approach learning, right? It does. It really does. It's like we trade that, that childlike curiosity for this fear of failure. But to unlock true potential, we have to, we have to shift that mindset. So how do we do that? How do we cultivate that beginner's mindset, not just in others, but in ourselves, especially when things feel you know, really high stakes. That's where embracing discomfort comes in. Now, Coros doesn't explicitly say that, but it's kind of woven throughout what he's saying, recognizing that the path to growth, it isn't always, you know, linear or comfortable for that matter. And Grant touches on this too in Hidden Potential, that part about procrastination. He doesn't just say it's laziness, right? No. He talks about it as this, this avoidance of getting where we actually want to go. Exactly. And when you think about it, what are we avoiding when we procrastinate? Often it's that discomfort of a challenge, the possibility of not measuring up. But by avoiding it, we're also avoiding the growth and the fulfillment that come from pushing past those zones, you know? Choosing the scenic route, but never reaching the destination. Which, yeah, doesn't exactly scream unlocking hidden potential, right? It's more like recognizing that those uncomfortable feelings, that fear, the uncertainty, making mistakes, they're not roadblocks. They're more like signposts, you know? They're pointing us toward growth. So less about avoiding discomfort and more about reframing it, like mm -hmm. a signal we're on the right track. Now that's a perspective shift. Absolutely. And, you know, this connects to another point both Koros and Grant bring up, this idea of teaching as a learning tool. Now that one I've always found interesting. Tell me more about that. Well, it turns out that the act of teaching something, when we have to retrieve that information and then explain it, that deepens our understanding so much more. Right. Like when you're studying for a test and you explain it to a friend, yeah, it sticks with you. Exactly. And Chorus uses himself as an example. He talks about how writing his weekly email, recording his podcast, that's a way for him to solidify what he's learning. Oh, right. He even talks about building in that connection and reflection time during his professional development yeah. where people share what they've learned. Exactly. It's creating a space for that active retrieval and explanation. And like Grant's research said, enhances learning and retention. And he encourages people to share their takeaways from the email on social media. Tag him even. It's like accountability, but also connecting with others over these ideas. You can tell he practices what he preaches. He does. He does. And I think that gets to the heart of this whole hidden potential idea. It's not just knowing stuff on your own. It's the engaging with it, sharing it, using it to spark new ideas. It's like, what is it they say? Knowledge shared is knowledge squared. Not just what we know, but how we share it, right? Create that ripple effect. Yeah, and that's what I love about this whole hidden potential thing. We're all capable of so much more than we realize, and it's not fixed. You know, we can cultivate it, unlock it through curiosity, through experimenting, being open to the unknown. 
it's challenging those assumptions about what we can do and then creating environments where others feel safe to do that too. Mm -hmm. That love of learning, not just for knowing, but for the discovering and creating. Love that. And it's not about some huge, you know, overnight change. It's the small steps each day. Remember that question Koros asked about how we might be discouraging exploration by focusing on the right answer? Powerful question. Makes you rethink learning and teaching in the classroom, but also just in our lives. And it goes back to embracing discomfort, doesn't it? If we want to unlock our own potential and D, help others do the same, we need to make it okay to not have all the answers, make those mistakes, and learn along the way. That growth mindset. Challenges are opportunities. Mistakes are like stepping stones, right? Shifting from, I don't know, to I'm excited to learn. Exactly. So with that in mind, what's one small step you could take today to tap into that curiosity? Embrace a little discomfort. Could it be picking up that book you've been meaning to read or signing up for that online course. Even just chatting with someone who has a totally different view. Just start somewhere. Okay. Because every step, big or small, takes us closer to that potential, right? Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. This has been a great deep dive. A lot to think about. So until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, keep pushing those boundaries.